Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to connect your electric fence energizer. This happens to be a Wizard 4 made by Nemtech. And I'm going to connect this to the IDS X64 alarm. It doesn't have to be an IDS alarm, the same principles apply. So you'll need to be able to open your energizer. There are two screws over here, they happen to be Allen key. Right, so I've removed these two screws and then I can remove the cover. Now every energizer is different and I'm going to explain it with regards to the Wizard 4. Now the Wizard 4 has a keypad option which we're not going to be using. But over here, if you have a look, if I remove this terminal block, you'll see that it says siren positive negative, light positive negative and switch. Now in order for you to connect this to your alarm system, you can use the siren option as the trigger. Right, so I'm going to put this back, but I just want to show you, it says siren positive, siren negative. And that's important because I'm going to show you what the energizer does when an alarm is activated. Right, so when you switch on your energizer, you will either be switching it on from a remote control or you'll be using one of these magnetic discs. So if I switch on the energizer now, you can see that it's operating. If yours is not operating, it's just because this button has to be depressed and you can override it by putting a jumper on this terminal over here, just allowing me to uh, work with the energizer while the cover is open. Because you might find that you try and switch yours on and it will not work because the cover's off. All right, so there we go. I've switched it on and I just want to show you here with my meter, if I go positive and negative, if I go put my meter here, you can see that nothing's really happening there. But when the energizer has an alarm, this will go 12 volts because it would activate the siren to make a sound. So I'm going to go now and generate an alarm. So what I did is I just removed the electrode here. Um, I've covered this here because it is a danger. It's a major shock hazard here. And the fan should immediately go into an alarm condition when I switch it on. Then I'm going to show you what happens here and how that can be used to connect to your alarm system. So I'm going to switch on the fence now and show you what's going to happen on this meter. Right, so I've got my positive and negative there. I'm going to activate the fence and watch the meter screen. And the energizer has now gone into an alarm condition. I'm sure you can hear that. But look at that, you're now getting 13.7 volts. That will stay there for about two minutes, keeping that siren on, letting you know that the fence has had a breach. Right, now you can see that that voltage is no longer there. Even though the fence is still in the alarm mode, that voltage has subsided. Right, to sum up, when the fence has been breached and an alarm condition occurs 12 volts is sitting here now why that's important is that activates your siren but this can also be used to connect a relay to it which can then act as your normally open or normally closed contacts for your alarm which means you will need a type of a relay board something like this something like this or if you haven't got those you can just go and buy a 12 volt dc relay and make your own relay board i'm now going to explain to you the principle of the relay and how that connects to your alarm right so here i have a relay board and i'm going to connect it to those same terminals positive and negative and when the alarm activates it's going to activate this relay to close a contact and when it closes a contact i can then connect my alarm wires there we go, my two wires for my alarm. This would be my electric fence zone. And on the IDS alarm, it wants a 3K3 resistor in series. There's my resistor, which will then need to be connected to this zone, because this now becomes a zone. Electric fence will be connected as a zone. If you try and connect this directly, it's not a good idea. It's not how it's supposed to be done. Right, so what I've done is I've connected a positive and a negative, which is connected to my relay board. All my relay board is doing is taking this 12 volt and connecting it nicely because it's on a circuit board to this relay. If you do not have a relay board, it's fine. You can just go and buy yourself a 12 volt relay and the coil is connected to the positive and negative. I will show you this later in the video. I'm just gonna first show you the connections using a relay board. Now, what happens is when the alarm activates, 
it opens the relay. So a relay normally has something called a normally open and a normally closed contact. Right, so there is the common wire and there it says normally closed. Now, as you can see, my meter is going to show zero ohms and it'll also beep telling me it's a short circuit. Look, if I touch these two leads together, it's a short circuit. If I touch on the common and the NC, the normally closed contact here, you'll hear the beep. So that means that that is always closed. But if I touch on the normally open, it'll be an open circuit because it's normally open. But only when 12 volts is outputted from here will the relay change its state, meaning the relay will activate. That means the normally closed will become an open and the normally open will become closed circuit just while the relay operates. Now I'll demonstrate that for you. Right, so I have the contacts on the common and the normally closed. The relay is at rest, meaning there's no voltage applied to the relay. Now what's going to happen, I'm going to activate the electric fence. Remember, I have the fence in a ready alarm condition, so it will alarm quite soon. And then you can hear it's alarming, and you can see what's happened is it's gone open circuit. If you look at that, it's gone offline on those contacts. Then when I cancel the alarm, you can see it becomes closed circuit again, allowing for current to flow. The zero zero is telling me it's zero ohms. Now, if I shift this to the normally open as well as the common, the reverse of that happens. So now it is open circuit, but only when the fence alarms, it will become closed circuit. See there? Okay, so depending on the type of alarm system you have and the type of zone, whether the zone must normally be a normally closed zone or a normally open zone, you can choose now what you want to do. So for the IDS alarm, we are going to use the normally closed. So all I'm doing is I'm going to put the one lead in the common and then with the series resistor into the normally closed. Right, so that would be for the IDS alarm. And what happens now is I go and connect it onto the panel. I'll go and find a zone and then I will just put it across the terminals of that zone. That I'll go and do now. Right, so these are just expander boards. Yours might look a little bit different. Yours might be the zones on the panel itself. And as you can see here, I'm on the second zone. So my electric fence wire are these two, the blue and the white, which I'm toggling now. And that happens to be zone 2. So on this particular alarm, you can see dip switch 2 and 3 are up, which puts me at expander board 6. So if I'm not mistaken, then this zone must be zone 58. Because 57 starts with number 1, and number 2 is 58. So if I have a look at my coding sheet, I can see 58 is electric fence, so that's correct. Yes, expander board number 6. And if I want to just check that there's a voltage there, remember the panel sends out a voltage. So there we see 1,89 volts. So the panel is connected to this relay board as a zone now. Right, and these wires here are the wires for the siren. So once you've connected your relay board, you can put your siren wires back if you do use a siren. So they're basically just connected in parallel. And now I'll switch on this electric fence and show you the zone on the keypad. This over here just allows me to switch the fence on and off using my phone. All right, so I'm now going to activate the fence. I do have a violated zone, that's just a garage door. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the electric fence on just using my phone. And the electric fence is currently in an alarm condition. So when I activate the electric fence, it should automatically alarm. I've set the electric fence to be a chime zone. So when it activates that zone, it should go doot 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 on the keypad. And then you might even hear the siren of the uh, energizer. There it says, violated 58. And you can hear the siren of the electric fence. Now I'm going to switch off the fence. Right, and then you can see that the zone has cleared. 
Uh, so I've drawn a circuit diagram so you can see how to connect this up if you're going to do yours with other components. There's your energizer. Usually on an energizer there will be a siren output. There's your positive and negative for your siren. You can see that my siren is connected to the negative and my siren is connected to the positive. Then on this side I have the alarm. Usually you'll have your terminal blocks for your alarm. Remember on mine I connected to the second zone so this is how it is on the IDS panel. Uh, other panels you follow the similar principle and then there's a terminating resistor for the IDS alarm and this happens to be 3k3 now what happens is that terminating resistor would normally be connected to your zone which would normally be closed so if you have a look at the wiring of this can you see it goes there there common now the common is the wire on the relay now remember I showed you you can also use a relay board so if you're using the relay board you would be connecting it to the common then on the output there it goes from the normally closed to the 3k3 resistor it doesn't matter if you have the resistor on this wire or you have it on this wire because it is a series circuit as you can see current can flow here all the time because the relay is not activating and it is normally closed when the alarm triggers and the energizer operates what happens is it activates the 12 volts for the siren so you're getting 12 volts there and then you're going to have a positive here and it's going to activate this relay so there's a magnet and it'll pull this contact this side opening the circuit here so it'll open that and now it'll close over there but remember we've got nothing connected there so all it's going to do is going to open our circuit to the zone where the alarm is therefore going to acknowledge a violated zone because it's going to be open now if you do not have such a thing like a relay board i'll quickly show you what to do and how to make one so there we go i've got a 12 volt relay you can buy any one it doesn't have to be this one and the reason why i say you can buy any one is because for an alarm the current is extremely low usually relays are specified in terms of voltage and current so some relays as you can see there it says 24 volts so in order to operate this relay you need 24 volt that's not going to work because my energizer is giving me 12 volt if your energizer is connected to a 24 volt siren well then you would look at a 24 volt relay if your energizer gives you even a lower voltage for example here is a 6 volt relay so if your energizer gives you 6 volts then you use a 6 volt relay how do you know the voltage well do you remember that i measured it and i was getting about 13 volts 13 volts is fine for a 12 volt relay so therefore we need to connect the positive and negative can you see i drew a coil there that's telling me that this is just to activate the relays so i just need to find the wires on the relay that are for the coil now most relays actually tell you either on the body or you'll have to uh, consult a diagram so for this relay it's actually telling me those two are the coil and can you see how it's offset and there's even a little picture there i don't know if you can see it on the video but there's a little picture there of something that looks like that so that's the coil so all i'd be doing is connecting the positive wire from the energizer which would be going to the siren to there and the negative there if you're wondering if you can swap these polarity absolutely if it doesn't matter if your energizer coil with a positive there and the negative there or the positive there and the negative there it is unidirectional you connect your voltage here from the energizer and that'll activate your relay now you might be wondering why there's so many pins here this is called a double pole double throw relay you'll just be using the one row so if you have a look you'll just be using there we go one two and three so one is normally open one is common and one is normally closed how do i know it there i can look at the diagram and i can see which is which so on this one it's showing me that the second and the third pin are normally closed so that's there and there are normally closed and you can check that that's not a difficult thing to check you'll just switch your meter on and watch it'll make the beeping sound so that is normally closed that means that the final terminal over there remember that it is with reference to that same common pin you can see that it's open circuit but if i go there normally closed so you'll be connecting your zone to there and there so all you need to do is solder the wire there and there what's nice is the relay board's got the terminals there but you can make your own you can just get some vero board and you can get some relays and you can get terminals and just make your own there's the input to activate the relay and there's the output and you can solder it in uh, this is something else yours will, won't be as complicated as this but i'm just showing you that this is not difficult stuff okay so you do not have to use a relay board you can just go and directly use a relay and if it's a relay like this that doesn't give you much information then what you can do is you can actually work out which are the coil wires a coil will have a ohmridge so if you see there that's the 0.2 ohms so the coil will have to be probably somewhere but maybe 10, yeah there we go 330 ohms i immediately know those are the coil wires and then the normally open would probably be 
one of those. You can see, so that's the normally closed. There we go. So there we go. I've got a dead short from there to there. And the normally open would be most probably that to that. And then to energize it, it's just those two over there. Now, something I just want to highlight to you is a relay has the ability to isolate circuits. So you don't have to worry about this 12 volt. It will never get into your alarm panel because it is galvanically isolated. It's pushing it using a magnet. So there is no connection from there to there and there's no connection from there to there. So you are perfectly safe doing this. You will never break your alarm panel by using a relay. In fact, that is the safest way to do this. Okay, so that explains it in a lot of detail and thanks for watching and cheers.